got she so. just got it it's a beagle i think it's a beagle spaniel mix um it's a you know it's a smaller dog right now and supposedly she's going to stay small and she was thinking you know that the dog had parvo so like basically i woke up and you know, Okay, so you're going to cut out two pieces that are whatever size for your pillow. Mine is, I should make it smaller because I don't have a lot of stuffing because I used it all in sewing class yesterday. So I'm going to cut mine down because I want it smaller because I know I have no stuffing. So you want your pocket at least 14 and a half inches wide. And then I would cut it 12 inches high because we're going to fold it down to make a pocket and hem it and all of that. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if mine is like this, I cut my pocket. So I did my pillow 14. I did 14 inch squares. And then so my pocket is 14 inches wide and 12 inches high. Cause then we'll kind of fold down the top edge of it like that. And it'll go on here. I just want it like nice and deep for whatever books you put in here so that they're not falling out. And if you wanted to, you could like we did the pencil case you know, is make yourself like a little, um, another little pocket to put a pencil or something if you wanted to. Depends on where you're going to put this. For the handle that goes up here, I would cut a piece. I'm just going to cut a piece of this that's eight inches long and three inches wide. Okay. So you should have uh, four pieces of fabric when you're done. The front and back of your pillow your pocket, and then your piece that we're gonna use for the handle. It's eight inches long and three inches wide. Okay, and for the handle, what we're gonna do, mine, I can't tell the right sides, but you wanna fold, fold it in half, if you have a right side, fold it in half the long way with your right sides together. And we're just gonna sew along the edge here. Basically, you're sewing this tube and then we're gonna turn it to the right side use a narrow seam allowance. And if you have a safety pin, you can take a safety pin and attach it to this to turn it to the right hand side. You can use your fingers, you know, you can your fingers are smaller than mine. So you can take your fingers and just kind of turn it to the right side that way. Or you can use like a, I'm going to, I think I'll probably send you guys, send your moms an email with a, like suggested sewing supplies. Uh, that'll just help you out if you plan on sewing for any amount of time. So this is a loop turner. I think I showed you guys this before. It's really good if you're doing thinner straps, like a spaghetti strap or something. I could actually turn this with a safety pin. I'm just going to use my loop turner. One way design, make sure your design is laid out the correct way. Like, so note, yours looks fine, Aubrey. I don't think you have a one way design. Do is turn it over. What we want to do is, oh, let me move this this way. Is turn in the top edge of our pocket. So what I'm going to do, just to give you guys a measurement here. Probably turn in the top edge, say two and a half inches. So that's the top of my pocket here. And I'm gonna start out by just folding it down two and a half inches. Right now we're gonna, okay, fold in the top edge, say two and a half inches. And then these raw edges, cause we don't wanna sew it like this. We wanna turn it under again. So like a quarter of an inch. Basically just fold your raw edges in and then we're sewing along that raw edge. I mean, sew, sewing along the folded edge that you have no raw edges. So where it's already folded two and a half, just fold it under again, you know, just a little bit. And then you're gonna pin that and that's where you're gonna sew. That way you don't have any like strings inside of your pocket or anything. As long as you have it um, folded under so that you have no raw edges, you have a folded edge here. Yeah, so that's where you're gonna sew along that folded edge.
So you want to take your pocket, Aubrey, and line it up onto your pillow, like one side. Then you're going to sew along the side, just where the pocket is, along the side, across the bottom, and then back up the other side. Be where you are. Okay, and I think on mine, I will draw myself a little line here just so I can put in like a couple pencils or something. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If I give it to my um, little cousin and she uses it for school, it'll be nice to have pillows and stuff in here. I mean, pencils or markers or something. So maybe I'll do like two extra little pockets over here. But if you don't want that, then, you know, you don't have to do it. Okay, so for me, I'm making two extra little pockets that will be two inches wide. So I just drew a line. So I'm just gonna sew here and sew here. So I'll have two smaller pockets or placements here for pencils or markers, and then a book can go over here. So for right now, what we're gonna do is just sew the top of it so that we can attach our um, strap. So don't sew all the way around yet. Just put the right sides together and you wanna sew the top edge for right now. But for right now, we're just gonna do the top part so that we can add our strap or our handle and then we'll come back and sew the rest. <laughs> Any problems? Oh, it looks like she's looking at her manual. Okay. So what we're gonna do is open it up and within the seam is where we're gonna sew our strap. So you can measure it if you want to and find the center. I'm just gonna look at it and go, yeah, that looks about the center. And then what I wanna do so that I don't have these edges here, I'm just gonna turn in the edge on each end of my strap. So if that's one end, I'll just turn it in like that. Turn it in a little bit like this. Okay, so it should look like that. And you wanna do both ends and turn it in on the other end so that when we sew it down, we are sewing those raw edges. Okay, yeah, so right within this seam is where we're going to put our handle. So like I said, you can take out a ruler and measure it and make sure you're three inches from either side. I'm just looking at it and going, yeah, that looks about right. So I'm putting my handle right in the middle here. And so I have my edges folded. So I'm gonna take my pin out. Yeah, and now pin it to that. Man, pinning through many layers is hard. Okay, and if you look at my handle, it's not necessarily flat because we're gonna stuff it. And so it's kind of a little raised from my um, top. Do you see that? So rather than just pulling it all the way out so that I'm sewing it flat like this, I just kind of pushed it in a little bit so that it is slightly raised. 
and just putting it over my seam here. Wait, is it this way or this way? It looks like you have it the right way. It's the long way over your seam. So it would look like this. Yep. Because you think you got a pillow. Yeah, you're carrying it like this. After I sew it, I will trim the edges, right? Correct. Okay. And so your handle for your bag, you might want to do that in a, a cotton fabric. Um, like what? if you could find a fabric that matches your uh, sequin. If not, you know, then just do it in that and just know it might be a little... I mean, it's just going to be a little bit, it's not hard. It just be a little extra work for you because it's sequin. That's so all. You want it to be flat like this and then sew it. Hold it so that you have your uh, stitching line up there and you're just going to stitch on the three sides. So if it's like this, you want to make sure it's flat at the top up here. You're going to stitch along the side. You can go to the bottom here, maybe stop here because Aubrey had a good idea. That's what I tend to do. Leave your opening at the bottom so that whatever stitch you do, if it doesn't look so great, you don't see it anyway, because it's at the bottom. So you wanna start sewing on the side, go to say right here and stop. So say you would stop there, start again over here. You wanna leave an opening about you know four inches wide at the bottom so that you can turn it to the right side. So then you would start sewing here and just go back up. But make sure it's, you know, flatten it out to sew it. So you want it to look like this at the top when you start. You should see your seam at the top. That's where you're starting. Okay. Let's okay, at the corner, I'm going to cut that diagonally so I have a nice sharp point there. And here where my opening, I don't want to trim that too much because I want to be able to turn those edges in. So just cut it like that. So I'll cut in and then trim it. Okay, then just turn it and stuff it. I have my edge here. I'm just going to fold my raw edges in so that I don't see it. And then I'm just going to take a pin because it's going to get undone. <laughs> yeah. Just put pins there. Okay. So what I do, so I have mine pinned at the bottom here. So I am going to, I'll just grab thread from my bobbin here. So I have a hand needle that I'm gonna put thread in. I need to get a hand needle. Okay, it's probably easier for you. So fold it, start with like a nice amount, say like, I don't know, maybe four inches, you have it folded and then fold it again. And then make a knot with that. So twist it around. And then you just kind of wanna make a little knot with that piece there. And, you know, it gets so little, it's hard to do. So I have it twisted around with this opening here. I'm going to put all these strings through it. And I'm just going to take my um, pin to do it. So I have it under there. I'm just going to take my pin and pull it out that way. I missed it. Okay, here, good. So I'll have it folded so that I have about a four inch, four or five inch fold. 
fold that in half. So now you have four strings that you're making a knot with. You get that part? Okay. And yeah, just make a knot with that piece, those four strings. That way it's a nice sturdy knot that won't come undone. And I, like I said, I have to use a pin because, um, you know, by the time it gets that little, it's hard to get your fingers in there. Okay. So I have a knot that looks like this. For right now, we're just gonna do a whip stitch. So you just wanna go put your needle inside here, get it in between your seam and come from the inside and go up through your seam like that. So that the knot you made, you don't even see. Okay. And like, see, I see my knot there. I'm just gonna stick it inside. You could do that or do a whip stitch where you just go around. In and out is usually how I can do it. That's how okay. I do it, like stamp, like. Uh, okay. Stamp. okay, so do that. I'm just doing a whip stitch here. So I'm basically just going from the back to the front and close to the edge. Okay, so when I finish, what do I do? Okay, so I'm say if this is my last stitch or if you're not, you wanna make another stitch. And then with your loop here, like before you pull it all the way through, You froze. Keep doing that. So let's see how close I can get. So I just kind of pull up some of the fabric and pull it as if I'm gonna make a stitch, but before my stitch closes, I wanna put my needle through that loop. Okay. And if you kind of keep going in the spot about three, four times, that makes a good knot for you. Then just cut it and that's it. Yay! Thanks for coming to class, you guys. You did a great job. You guys have you guys have a good weekend. I'll see you next Friday.